Good morning from Cascabel, uh, Arizona. A uh, beautiful country out here, uh, middle of the desert. And with David and Pearl in this, uh, talk about isolated in the best possible manner, right? <laughs> um, and they're gonna be talking about their cooker. Uh, I think a little bit about your homestead here. I mean, it'd be really sure. great to know about sure, that. Sure. And uh, they know from a previous episode, uh, Andy and Mark out there in Kentucky. And so a little bit of synergy here, a little connection. So. <laughs> yep. So, and I usually just have three questions, and the one is, uh, the first one is always, how did you find out about solar energy in any way, shape, or form, and then specifically solar cooking? And then what are you doing now? You know, is this the whole package, part of your lifestyle here, part of your uh, off-the-grid yep. experience, mm -hmm. a green living? And then what do you see the future of, of solar cooking? You know, how, do you have any ideas for promotion and so forth? So, so let's take them in order. How did you find out about solar energy, solar cooking, and so forth? Well, I'm, yeah, yeah, you're the one that got me into it. Okay, Not yes, the prime, prime yeah. mover and shaker. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I've just had a long time interest in, in um, various alternative forms of energy. Uh, solar being, uh, the, I think, the standout, particularly here in the desert. I mean, we have sun, except for this morning. <laughs> it's a little bit. I'm getting blinded. It, uh, <laughs> we probably won't have significant clouds for the next two or three weeks. But yep. uh, anyway, we have a lot of sun here. Um, and um, uh, gosh, I guess I started with my first solar oven. Let me think about that. Probably about 1990. And or maybe even late eighties. Wow. And uh, yeah, I and think you were building it just about the time we met. <laughs> right. So right. So sure. and been doing it ever since. And designed uh, quite a few different ovens along the way. Try to read what other people have done. Incorporate what appear to be the best ideas for our situation. And uh, in terms of solar uh, solar energy, we have. Uh, our, our workhorse solar oven here, and we can talk about more about that in a little bit. Um, we also have a solar water heater here. We try Almost to keep beautiful. our, our uh, uh, technologies as simple as possible. Hopefully that others can, can uh, replicate them if they want to. This uh, just has a five gallon bucket that, uh, or uh, an old fuel can. Um, that uh, we fill up every morning. It heats during the day from the sun. And then in the evening, we carry it over and put it in that bucket and we have an outdoor shower there. All right. We have no, uh, no plumbing inside the house. Okay. It's all outdoors. We, a lot of our food storage is outdoors. We wanted to make as much use of outdoor space as possible and um, kind of, force ourselves uh, to get outside frequently sure. um, because uh, we really enjoy the place. And, uh, Solar ovens make you super conscious of the, what's happening with the weather. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And we're also off-grid here. We have uh, solar panels and all of our electricity is generated from the sun. So sure. we use the sun in a lot of ways here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, so off the grid, this is, this is like maybe a big tiny home right this is the is this your it's main? actually toward the small end of is it really of, from, from what we've okay. seen around the country yeah okay yeah it's eight feet by 16 feet okay so. okay uh so let's talk about this cooker yeah, right there Oops, I'll... yeah and then we can spin it back but uh so it's got uh four stainless steel reflectors uh double pane thermal glass on the front um it's almost all metal construction, except for the yoke um, and the handles on the door. Everything else is metal. And uh, the reason for that was we built an almost identical one um, about uh, 20 years ago. And uh, it worked fine for probably a dozen years. And then uh, gradually the wood just broke down because it's left out in the weather all the time, year round. And we decided we wanted to build one that we wouldn't have much in the way of maintenance issues with. And uh, so we basically built the same design, but in all metal. Um, 
Sure. So, sure. The nice part about it is that it's um, so um, adjustable, it's so easily adjustable, and being in a set permanently with these side shelves and everything, it's super convenient, and that's probably the most important thing that we've um, discovered over the years as far as solar cookers is that they need to be convenient, otherwise they don't get used. Yeah. So you can see here that it can turn to face the sun very easily. Oh, just um, in time for the sun to hit it too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's that and then it also easily adjusts in this orientation and the shelf inside oh. stays steady. Sure. So um, it's super easy to use um, and no, basically no maintenance. Yeah. Well, now is this stainless steel? The so reflectors are stainless steel. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, this, this is all steel. The box itself, both the, the inner oven box and the outer oven box, are uh, aluminum. Okay. And, uh, and the, David actually uh, collaborated with a friend, a mathematician friend, to uh, figure out the exact angles sure. for the for the reflectors, so that all the light that hits them is reflected into the right. into the box. Well, right. Did you do the, the metal work here, the welding? A uh, uh, friend of mine uh, did the welding, and I did all the rest of the fabrication. Okay. I cut out all the pieces. Okay, because that's rock solid. And yeah, beautiful. oh yeah, these, these it's very very sturdy. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And you got the access in the back too? Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. access is uh, here. Because that has been a constant uh, theme when I talk to people design the yeah. shelves. Yeah. Yeah. And I love these. Oh, yes. The, the shelves there. You can prep and, uh, and, yeah. It's just so it's nice to be able to come out with a tray of food, set it down here, set the cover, set the uh, lid on other shelf and you're ready to go and it's all just very convenient yes and then to have the uh, the shelf it's attached actually to the, the pivots here and uh, so the shelf always remains level no matter what angle the ovens there you at. go for the call it gam gamble rack or something like that. right so that's just another convenience feature And 20 years ago or longer? And then about seven years ago, after the um, original um, wood model finally gave up the ghost, we built this. So this is about seven years old. Okay. And it gets basically daily use. It's our only oven. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, no natural gas, no... No, no correct. Not even, not even wood, like, as a backup? No. I mean, you know, with, with just a handful of days like this a year, why, right? You can... Uh, right, yeah, right, we, exactly. we have sun almost every day, sure. so there's just no need for a yeah. standard oven. Sure. We could be that flexible. <laughs> yes, yeah. Well, so now, uh, El Burro y La Perla, what's the story behind that? <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you could share that. Uh, sure. That so about um, uh, a dozen years ago, we bought a, uh, a van. Um, it was an old delivery van, a panel van. And uh, we converted it into a camper. And uh, when we got it all fixed up, we, we took it into Tucson to where some friends of ours live and kind of a community living situation. Anyway, uh, we're parked inside in the courtyard there and we wake up the next morning. We and slept in the, in the slept van. Slept in the van. Yeah. We wake up the next morning and one of our neighbors has uh, put this poster on the side. You know, there these those vans are really popular for uh, like uh, food, food vendors. Sure. Yeah, sure. And uh, so uh, uh, they had this sign all in Spanish about you know, what burritos you could order here, and... Uh, the name of the establishment was La oh. Perla y el Burro. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you can guess who's who. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we just we just kind of have had fun with it ever sure. since yeah. then. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 
Well, yeah. beautiful. Yeah, I can't think of any other questions. I mean, it's a, and this is a, a, is this like cedar or, or treated wood or what? Uh, no, it's just uh, two by fours we got at the sure. lumber yard. Mm -hmm. And um, we coat it oh, every couple of years with some linseed oil. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah. Good, good. Yeah, because yeah, uh, the green treated wood, I remember when they took that out because of the problems with the treatment. Uh -huh. and, and I'd already made a deck with it. And uh, yeah, yeah. And I just don't want, you know. <laughs> Trying to get out of the chemical, chemical yeah. world yeah. now, so so that's great. Yeah. And you get so little rainfall. I mean, it's exactly. Not gonna, yeah. Right. So right. A little bit of that yeah. to protect it. Yeah. And that's rock solid. I mean, that's shoot. That's oh yeah. Like a, yeah. That's no, like it'll a, stand up. We've had some terrific winds here. Yeah. Uh, and it's uh, it's hadn't bothered it a bit. Yep. So. You're kind of in a canyon here, so you get a you get some of the winds will actually funnel here, I suppose. Maybe Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. with thunderstorms. Sure. You get Sure. High winds. Well, so. uh, tell me a little bit about the rest of the homestead here. Is you're collecting water when you get it? Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You have yeah. like a garden? Or we have a, so we just, we spend about half the year here and, right. and half the year in Oregon. Okay. And uh, so we just got back about three days, three or four days ago. Yep. So we haven't planted the garden yet. This but is the garden. This is a circle garden and um, by uh we'll be planting it probably tomorrow okay and uh by uh early january we'll be able to start eating uh so it's what uh, toward the end of october now by early january we'll be eating salads out of it cool and by uh by february it's like the plants are just on steroids as the days get longer sure and uh it starts to get more sun and yeah and and that's how we use the rainwater Hey, right. The, the rainwater, rainwater is... almost entirely goes into the gardens. And then the panels, the Zero. solar panels there in the back there. Yep. You can move there and just take... You were off the grid, you got some panels there? Yes. Yeah, we've got about 480 watts worth of panels there and it provides more than enough electricity for us for running uh, a couple laptop computers, lights, sound system, rechargeable batteries, um, uh, that sort of thing. So. Sure. And only, what, 480 watts? Oh, yeah. And it's, like I say, it, it's more power than we know what to do with. Yep. Um, mostly because we're, you know, attentive about not having a bunch of appliances yep. that need electricity. But we do have the basic, like I say, computers and um, modem and lights and sound system. and. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. All the, all the luxuries all the, uh, right. of, of modern life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And what's under the what's under the uh, corrugated uh, in the boxes? Uh, so those tools? are storage boxes. Oh, storage, one okay. has a lot of my tools, and the other one has more materials. Okay. And, uh, sure. So. And that's the shop. <laughs> oh, right, the right. Beside well, the bench. That's my yeah. workbench. Oh, right, right, yeah, the, the workbench. Work yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Multi-purpose. Yeah. yeah. Multi-purpose. And this is our cottage. It's yes. uh, like as I I think I mentioned, it's uh, an eight by sixteen, hundred and twenty-eight square feet, and. Um, it's been our home for, let me think about this, since 1997, mm -hmm. and we just love it. It's the favorite place we've ever lived yeah. in. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, we do a lot of outdoor living. As you can see, we have a large uh, uh, shaded area here, sort of our front porch, with, with a uh, shade ramada over the top and uh, gravel floor. Um, and then most of the water activities happen over here. Um, yes, our only so. tap, uh, water tap on the property is that hose bib right there. Okay. And it is hooked up to a uh, solar pump, okay. uh, which is at the well, which is uh, almost half a mile from here. Um, wow. And uh, it's, it's on a shared well. We share it with a neighbor. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so it's so, all gravity fed right. from, that, from a tank up there by the well. Sure. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So we just use this bucket to uh, carry water. Right. Uh, so our dishwashing station is here on one side of the uh, tap. And this is our hand washing area. Um, we do laundry here in, in the tub. Um, shower. And this is also our shower. We yep. shower outdoors. Okay. And sometimes people say, well, isn't it, 
isn't it just um, uh, really uncomfortable when you want to shower and it's the middle of the winter? Actually, one of our favorite times to shower is when it's snowing. Sure. That doesn't happen very often, but uh, on winter evenings, we have a wood stove inside. Yeah. So we'll put a little extra wood in there. It'll be like 80 degrees inside, and we only have like about five steps to get up to the shower. Yep. And then we're sort of enveloped in this cloud of... We of, make sure uh, it's very hot. The yes. water's very hot. Sure. Yeah. And because we heat it on the wood stove. And um, we come out here, and like I say, just almost immediately you're enveloped in this cloud of steam. And when it's snowing, that that's it, it's just beautiful out oh, here. Yeah. It's kind of magical, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it kind of reminds me of, a, you know, like uh, Sweden where they have the saunas and the... It'll yeah. be right by the lake shore. And, yeah. Uh, if it's not frozen over, they do the running in on. And We're pretty good at taking quick showers. Yes. Uh, yeah. There's, there's actually there's a there's a story that I I can relate if you want about sure. why we don't have plumbing inside the house. Yeah. Um. So uh, the the reason we don't have plumbing inside the house is that uh, many decades ago um, I was in charge of office maintenance for a series of office buildings in downtown Seattle. And uh, the, the uh, sort of, uh, uh, I always had a, a walkie-talkie with me, and uh, the uh, sort of code blue emergency call was always about plumbing. If there was a plumbing leak, you know, it might start on the fifth floor and go down to the fourth, the third, the second. It was always just a total mess. So, um, uh, one morning I'd had like two or three plumbing emergencies and uh, uh, there was a cafeteria in one of the office buildings that I often ate at and I'm going through the line and I get up to the cashier who knows me because I work there every day and uh, she said, Dave, you're, you're looking pretty stressed. I said, yeah, I've had three plumbing emergencies this morning and you know something, someday I'm going to build a house for myself and it will have no plumbing and we love it we would never again consider having plumbing in the house it's one of humanity's yeah. worst ideas yeah. 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 well it's it's the number one call that i get out here i'm basically retired at this point but i still yeah. help folks out with sure. maintenance issues and it is absolutely the number one call that i get is sure. plumbing issues wow well, yeah. well, okay, okay so then the last question just is uh, what what are your thoughts about promoting it for so people would actually I mean, the big question on the solar cookers world network on facebook is mm -hmm. adoption so you sent a thousand solar cookers to Zambia. I always pick on Zambia because I know very few people know anything about it. I don't know much about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, say they go there to, to reduce deforestation or right. or uh, help villages where they have a lot of waterborne diseases, you know, yeah. and kids are dying young. And what are your thoughts on that? If any, I don't have to. <laughs> yeah. Um, as we talked about a little while ago, it's got to be convenient. It's got to be durable. Um, and it's got to be suited to, in, in situations like you mentioned, it has to suit the kind of cooking they're used to. If they're used to frying everything, solar oven's going to be a hard sell. Yeah. But, you know, if, if baking is something that either they can get into or that they have been doing, and uh, they have, it, it's an area that has good uh, solar insulation, um, that can work well, but there are a number of variables there that all have to be working together sure. in that, including cultural. And yeah, yeah. One, to work. one other thing we might mention sure. is that um, we have uh, a section on our website about our sort of the evolution yes. of our solar oven models over the years, over yes. the decades actually, because we've been doing this since, uh, well, 91, 30 mm -hmm. years. Yeah, so 30 years. Yes, including years. with Andy. Yeah, including yeah. with Andy McDonald. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, one of our early ovens, um, it had an eight sided reflector. It was set up very much like this. Sure. And it was on a yoke, very convenient to use. And it would get up to almost 600 degrees. Wow. And uh, actually, I think a little over 600. At any rate, uh, <laughs> kind of a funny story there. Um, uh, I built it, and then we. Uh, First day we went to use it, we aimed it toward the sun, and uh, then uh, we were talking with somebody about it, and uh, at one point, one of us started smelling smoke, 
Oh no! And uh, <laughs> we looked over at the oven, and uh, smoke was starting to come out through the access door. Oh, no. And we pulled the door up, and billows of smoke <laughs> came out. <laughs> and uh, we had used we had used um, aluminum foil over corrugated cardboard, many layers of that to make yeah. the insulation. Yep. And uh, the the uh, you you've probably heard of the movie Fahrenheit 451, yes. oh, the ignition point of paper, yep. Yep. and that's <laughs> when we hit 600, it was way over oh, 451, <laughs> and uh, so we had to do some redesigning. Sure. At the, uh, you, you got photos on there? I remember. I've been oh, yeah. looking up. I didn't. Uh, We've got photos on yeah. the way, and the website, by the way, is omic.net. O m i c k dot net. And uh, there's, if you look at the, the menu on the, on the left-hand side of the home page, you'll see solar ovens sure. there, and uh, it's, it's all on there. Yeah, so. and if, if it's okay with you, pretty much everyone's fine with this. Is a, I have a few photos I can overlay while you're talking about. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that'd Absolutely. be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, all, everything we do here is open source. Sure, So sure. we like to share. Yeah, and, uh, that's the, the idea. Purpose. But yeah. Yolan, you can just hardly believe you can get that much heat out of the sun. Yeah. Uh, I, still know, once you thrill, I still get a thrill out of, you yep. know, you have a clear lid and you can see it actually bubbling. Yes. You know, it's just, yep. yeah. it it's just feels great. Oh,